glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Our feet shall stand within thy gates, O Jerusalem. Welcome into this place.
praise him, praise him. Thank you, Jesus. Welcome, everybody. Good morning. Happy Sunday. Happy Sunday. Amen. May we please open our bulletins and follow our welcome and greeting. Yes, amen. amen. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come, lift your voices to the Lord who always hears us. Listen, Lord. Hear our voices, sing your praises. Call on the Lord, who bends low to hear us. Listen, Lord, we lift our voices to you in praise. Call on the name of the Lord, all people. Listen, Lord, we call on your wonderful name. For you saved us, you raised us and turned our lives around. Let your name be praised in this congregation. Our intro is Jesus' name above all each and every one of us here today. This is truly a blessing, my God. 
because without you, we would have nothing. And I am grateful to you, my God, for each and every spirit that is here today. I thank you for your spirit, my God. I thank you for having your spirit in us, dear God. I thank you for the chance of second chances that you have given us, Lord. I thank you for reminding us to never forget about you, my God. I thank you for writing your truth on our hearts, dear God. And I thank you for bringing us here to worship you today and to remember to worship you tomorrow and every day that follows. Thank you, dear Lord, for this day. Amen. All right. Our opening hymn is Open My Eyes, number 454 in our hymnals.
close. So I really ask for prayer for her. Thank you. son was just admitted to a nursing home, mm -hmm. so she's asking for prayer because she's really broken up. I would like to lift up all of the children, just children in general. There's a lot of things happening in schools and at home, and I just want to lift them up personally as well, like for their spirits to be encouraged in God. I have a prayer from uh, Gwyneth Hazel for Leroy, who's having surgery. He's in the hospital. He's having surgery. Leroy. Leroy. Yeah, Leroy's yeah. having surgery. Many of you reached out to him, and he said it helped him a lot, and all the messages that he received. Um, so I want to say thank you for that. Thank you, and continue to lift him up.
Thank you for that prayer, Pastor Lydia. Will the praise team be coming up now? Thank you. Church, we are going through some hard times in our personal lives, in our church lives. But we must always remember, we still got to praise God because he tells us, praise us in the good time, praise us in the bad time. And I like to start up a little song that I like to hear my sister here sing. God is on the main line still. We can call him up and tell him what we want. Jesus on that main line, tell him what you want. Oh, Jesus on that main line, tell him what you want. Hallelujah, Jesus on that main line, tell him what you want. You just call him up and tell him what you want. Call him up and tell him what you want. You just call him up. Call him up and tell him what you want. You just call him up. Call him up and tell him what you want. Oh, Jesus on the main line now. If you need your body healed, if you your body heal tell him what you want oh if you need your body heal just tell him what you want oh if you want your body heal tell him what you want you just call him up and tell him what you want you want the holy ghost want the Holy Ghost, just tell him what you want. Oh, if you want the Holy Ghost, tell him what you want. Oh, if you want the Holy Ghost, tell him what you want. Oh, you just Jesus on that bed, not now. That's what I'm saying. Call him up. Call him up, call him up, and tell him what you want. What you say? You, you just call him up, call him up, and tell him what you want. Can't hear you. You just call him up, call him up, and tell him what you want. Oh, Jesus on that main line now. Call him up, call him up and tell him what you want. You, you just, just call him up, call him up and tell him hallelujah. You just call him up, call him up and tell him what you want. Jesus on that main. just want to praise him.
You need to 
for that. Now we've come to the time where we can pass the peace from your seat, or if you'd like to stand up and greet somebody that you haven't seen in a while, now is the time. Amen. You know, peace be with you. Peace be with you all. Let us, let us move a little bit today. Just, just, just say to one another, peace be with you. That is the Easter greeting. Jesus loves you, everybody smile, Jesus loves you, smile, everybody smile, everybody smile, everybody smile, smile, everybody smile, everybody smile, everybody smile. First reading by Xavier. Good morning, church. Today I will be reading the book of Acts, chapter 3, verses 12 through 19. When Peter saw it, he addressed the people, You Israelites, why do you wonder at this? Or why do you stare at us? As though by our own power or pity we made him walk. The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. The God of our ancestors has glorified his servant Jesus whom you handed over and rejected in the presence of Pilate, though he had decided to release him. But you rejected the holy and righteous one and asked to have a murderer given to you. And you killed the author of life, whom God raised from the dead. To this we are witnesses, and by faith in his name, his name itself has made this man strong, who you see and know. And the, faith that is, and the faith that is through Jesus has given him this perfect health and in the presence of all of you. And now, friends, I, kn I know that you acted in ignorance, as did also your rulers. In this way, God fulfilled what he had foretold through all the prophets that, that his Messiah would suffer. Repent, therefore, and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out. This is the word of the Lord for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Good morning, church. Good morning. This is the responsive reading. Today I'll be reading Psalms 4. Answer me when I call, O God of my right. You gave me room when I was distressed. Be gr gracious to me and hear my prayer. How long, you people, shall my Lord suffer How long will you look away from me and see the But know that the Lord has 
set apart the faithful for himself. The Lord hears when I call to him. Offer right sacrifices and put your trust in the Lord. You have put gladness in my heart, more with the, gra- with the grain and wine abound. I will hold my arms and be empty, for you alone, Lord, make me like I am. Amen. Amen. Good morning, church. Good morning, church. <coughs> I'll be reading the first letter of John, chapter 3, chapter 3, verse 1 through 7. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is, is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will what we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this. When he is revealed, we will be like him, for we will see him as he is. And all who have this hope in him purify themselves, just as, just as he is pure. Everyone who commits sin is guilty of lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know... You know that he was revealed to take away sins, and, and in him there is no sin. No, no one who ad, abides in him sins, abides in his sins. No one, who, no one who sins has either seen him or known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. Everyone who does what is right is righteous just as he is righteous. This is the word, this is the word of the Lord for the people of God. Amen. Okay, the last reading will be from the gospel according to Luke, chapter 24, verses 36 through 48. Please say amen when you have the reading and stand if you are able. While they were talking about this, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, peace be with you. They were startled and and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, why are you frightened? And why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see, for a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While in their joy they were, in, they were disbelieving and still wondering, he said to them, have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate in their presence. Then he said to them, these are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations. Beginning from Jerusalem, you are witnesses of these things. This is the word of the Lord for the people of God. Thanks be to God. A 
Okay, so now we will have a musical selection by Nigel. Uh, musical selection is coming from all of us. Can we? <laughs> if you have a hymn book, could you turn your hymn books to song number 369? 369. And for this song, I'm going to ask, hopefully we can hear the men sing. But I'm going to ask the females to sing the first verse. Males sing the second. We all sing the last. We all sing the verse, the choruses too. All right? So just the verses. Number the three. verses, no. verse one, the female, the ladies will sing that. Verse two, the men will sing that part. And we all sing the last verse together. Ah. Ladies. Praising Him with our voices, 
Praising him with our hearts. Praising him with our thoughts. Praising him with our deeds. Praising him with the way we care with one another. Praising him with, with the way we lift each other up. Praising him as we share the wonderful story of Christ dying for us and being risen again. Grace and peace be to you, brothers and sisters, from God, the author of life, and Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are still in Easter. This is still the reason of Easter. We have just learned, we have just celebrated the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. And we continue trying to understand what does it mean to be a community that confesses and professes and trusts in a recent Lord, in a recent Lord. Imagine you can understand the followers of Jesus, the apostles, the disciples, right after Christ's resurre resurrection. Because he, Christ has been telling them, I'll die, but I'll risen again. But sometimes you don't get things right, right easier right there the first time. It happens to us when we are parents. It happens to our relationship. Sometimes you say something, but we don't get it. So we have to repeat it, repeat it, repeat it again until it finally we get it inside. I always say, first we, we, we understand things in our mind, but when we really understand is when we understand them in our hearts inside of us, inside of us. And sometimes something catastrophic even has to happen so we can look back and say, oh, that was what she or he was talking about because sometimes we don't get it right away. Well, the same thing happened to the disciples. One thing, it was what Christ was telling them, I'm going to die, I'm going to be resurrected. But another thing is when the actual when the actual resurrection of Christ happened, they could not make the connection between their minds and their hearts and immediately trust and believe the resurrection of Christ. So right after the resurrection, all the gospel, of the gospel, what they tell us is what happened to the disciples, what happened to that small community right after Christ resurrected and those few days that they did not see him and that they did not know what really or understood what really happened. That's what we, we, we see these uh, stories of the apparition of what, when Jesus presents to them in a different way. We don't know what way, and I'm not going to speculate, but it's, he doesn't appear to them right like in the body that he had before, but appears to them in a way that they can recognize and see him and even touch him. So it is a kind of, of presence. It is a different presence, but it's a presence that they know who he is, that they know who he is. So all these stories in all the gospel are very similar when Jesus appeared to the disciples and last Sunday we heard the same, almost the same story in the Gospel of John, and we learned from Reverend Hayes about the power and the presence and the prayer and the purpose that Jesus' presence gave to that group of community. And today we have a similar uh, story. And one of the things that we learn immediately is that once Jesus resurrected, they all became afraid. And they all, some of them, uh, you know, did, did not trust each other, but they all gathered 
they all gather, afraid and with conflict among themselves, but they remain together. They remain together. That doesn't happen so often. Now that we talk about the death of someone, I who has presided over families in grieving and who have lost, I have seen so many families that once someone, the center of the family, or the father, or the mother, or the great aunt, or someone dies, the whole family falls apart. And then there's, there's nothing, they never see each other again. They never gather again. And you say, well, I guess someone, so and so was the glue to the family. And once that person goes away, that glue is not there anymore, so we become dismembered and separated from one another. Well, that's very sad, because what can you do if you are not together? What can we do as family if we don't see each other, if we don't gather, if we don't love each other? That's all we have, together, together, togetherness, being together, loving each other, caring for one another, being there for one another. There's nothing more sad and more uh, uh, lonely than having a funeral with only one or two persons because nobody wants to be there and so and so when there. Those things happen, those things happen. But something that is different, that even, even when the disciples were not completely assured and were kind of overwhelmed about the reason, the resurrection of Jesus, they decided to remain together. They decided to do what they continue to do, to break bread with one another, to walk with one another, to share with one another the things that were happening. And in today's chapter 24 that we just read, the end of this chapter, at the beginning of the chapter, there are two, two of the disciples walking, walking toward Emmaus, talking to one another, and, and uh, well, this is what happened, this is what happened, and Jesus joins them, and they are so overwhelmed and into the discussion and into the conversation about, oh, do you hear what the women said that Jesus uh, resurrected? And they are so immersed in the conversation that Jesus joined them, and they did not even realize that this was the recent Christ. They see him, but they did not recognize him. Until later on, until later on, when we got it, they are still gathered because they invited, oh, let's come home, let's come home, let's be with us. But they still don't know that this is the recent Christ until he breaks bread with them. And when he breaks bread with them, they recognize that this is the recent Savior, that this is the recent Lord. Well, that's what uh, part of what we are supposed to do. The church, and the church of the first century, the church of the, of the scripture, the church that we are told in the book of Acts, they continue to gather, they continue to gather, and they continue to break bread together. Not only that, if you heard the readings of the past few uh, weeks, they even shared everything that they have with one another. He said that they have everything in common, that nobody lacks for anything because they were so concerned and caring for one another that they all became as one, gathered together, because that's what they learned, because they learned to be a community. That's what the recent Christ teaches us, how to be a community, how to be the body of Christ. We are called to be the body of Christ. We are called to be a community of faith. We are called to, to be a community that gathers around the recent Christ. When we gather, we don't gather as separate members who just happen to gather here. No, we are connected. 
We are connected with one calling. We are connected by God. We are made one. We are connected one bap one baptism. We are connected by one faith. We are connected by the one who has called us to follow him. We are connected. We are a community. We are the body of Christ. We don't gather as separate people. We gather as one. We gather as one. That's what we use the word we, 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 and continue to hear the word together and sing together because we are witnessing our faith together because we are one in Christ. And that's what, I, what the scriptures say, in, not, not in such a word that you know that we say a uh, block is thicker than water. That's all right. It's true. Blood is thicker than water. But in Christ, water is thicker than blood. Can you believe that? In Christ, water is thicker than blood because we are all being baptized in the waters of baptism. And it's those waters, that baptism, that make us one. That make us confess one faith. That make us, well, we need to continue saying that we are one until it comes from here and goes down inside our heart and we continue to see one another and to see each other and to support each other and to love each other and to care for one another and to value and to value and lift up one another. So these first disciples, we hear again that they continue, that they continue to, to gather and in fact that they, they have abandoned Jesus or deny him. Jesus did not abandon or deny or accuse them. It doesn't matter how they felt when they gathered. Jesus is still there and stands among them and says to them, peace be with you. Peace not as a noun, but as a blessing. Peace, peace be among you. That's why we need each other. We need each other because we need to hear the word of God when God says, peace be to you. Love be with you. I am with you. We need to continue to hear those words so we continue. We continue to go on, go on along with others. So they meet again. They sit again and they, are, they see Jesus' hands and feet and eat with one another. They recognize Jesus' presence among them, the one who called them long time ago in the lake, who called them from different places. They recognize that this is the same Jesus that is there in present among them. This was the one who had returned to stand among them again, seeking them out once again, in the midst of the fears, in the midst of the struggles, in the midst of the pain of the present moment, in the midst of all their doubts, in the midst of everything that is going on in their minds and in their lives, Jesus is with them. And this is the message of the resurrection, that Jesus is with us, that the presence of Jesus, that the risen Christ is with us. Jesus is with us and shows them his hands and his feet and says to them, you are witnesses of these things and sends them into the world. So from then on, after the resurrection, everything happens. It's when the church, the body of Christ as such, comes together. And the book of Acts that we that Xavier so beautifully read at the beginning, this book of Acts is the second part, is the story of the early church. In fact, the book of Acts, even though it doesn't appear attached to, to the Gospel of Luke, it is one, one work, it is one book. The first part 
it is the Gospel of Luke, and the second part, it is the book of Acts. You can go home and read the beginning of, of Luke and then read the beginning of Acts, and you see that it's the same. It's the same story. It is one book, but one is when Jesus is alive and, and, and all the story about Jesus, and the second is when Jesus is risen and begins the story of the church. And I want to mention a couple of things quickly about the reading that we find in the book of Acts after, after Jesus is risen, after Jesus does not appear any longer to the disciples, but the church is on their own. And the church has received, had received this commandment from Jesus, go and proclaim my word, go and be witnesses. That's the, the message to that community of the disciples. You have to be witness. Go into the world. Go and be witnesses. And they gather, they gather in Jerusalem. They receive the Holy Spirit. Everybody, not only the apostles, everybody began to speak in the language that they understood. So the, 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 the gospel was shared and proclaimed and extended. And here today, in this, in the reading for today, we have Peter, who became the leader of the church. Of course, he had to be the leader, the earliest leader of the church, because he was always talking and saying something. So he, are, he has three, three speeches. His first speech is when they name Matthias, Matthias, to fill the vacancy that Judas left. That's his first speech. The second speech is when they are gathered in Jerusalem, and he, and he said, this is what the prophet Joel uh, prophesied. That's the second speech. And today, we find the third speech of Peter, addressing the people. And he tells them, to everybody that is listening, including the apostles, you Israelites, because that's the origin of the Christian faith, you Israelites, why do you wonder at, at this? What do you stare at us? as though by our power of piety, we had made him walk. What is he talking about? Well, what is Peter referring to? In the previous verses of today's reading, we read that one day, as Peter and John were going to the temple at the hour of prayer, prayer was a discipline. There was an hour of prayer, actually, there were three times that those who believe will go to pray. Prayer was a constant in the life of the first community. So when Peter and John are as accustomed, are going to the temple at the hour of prayer, a man lame from birth was being carried in. For people would lay him daily at the gate of the temple so that he could ask, for aims, for arms, sorry, for money. So he could ask for money from those entering the temple. Something that people still do today. Uh, if you go to many churches, you, you see, and especially if you have steps, you, 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 you find people right there asking because it's a place that many people go. Now not only at churches, also in front of subways. Whenever people see many people coming and in and out, you find people asking uh, for money. So this man was carried there so he can get some alms, some money for his sustenance. And when this man saw Peter and John about to go into the temple, he asked them for money. But Peter, looking intently straight at him, as John also did, said to him, look at us. I have no silver or gold, but what I have, I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, stand up and walk. And he took him by the hand and raised him up, and immediately his feet and ankles 
were made strong. Jumping up, he stood and began to walk, and he entered the temple with them, walking and leaping and praising God. Amen. Think with me about how this story, I believe, is a metaphor for what a life as a church can ought to be like, as Luke the writer intended. First of all, where does this sign where does this sign of God's, this, this sign of healing, of God's power and presence take place? Where does this healing take place? Where? In the temple. Inside the temple or outside the temple? Outside of the temple. Not inside, not in church. Not during prayer of worship, but outside of the temple in a man who surely had never attended a prayer of worship service inside. This was a man on the margins of society because of a physical disability. He had been laid from birth. So they will let him get your money so you can continue living on. Nobody worry about anything else about him. His life was marked by the indignity of begging for change in order to be able to get by day by day. And the healing he so desperately needed is the recognition that of his dignity as a human being. Amen. They healed him. Peter and John healed him. They said to him, we have no money, not because we should not give money to people. Not because, no, because they did not have it. Because Peter and John, the disciples, were poor as well. They did not give because they did not have anything to give from their pocket but also but also because they made the connection with someone at the margin with someone outside and themselves who were believers who were part of a community that professed the recent Christ well they they began, the healing began, the healing of this man began when the few compassionate people started carrying him every day to lay just outside the beautiful gate, as it, the gate was called. And then these two, who believed in the resurrection, who were on their way to a prayer service, took the time before they went into into the temple to put, to place their eyes on him. They placed, they saw him. They saw him. They listened to him. Sometimes people ask you, and you do not listen at all. They listened to him, and they did what they were able to do for him. In this, when they said to him, I have no money, but I or silver or gold, but I will give you what I have. In the name of Jesus, stand up. And that they have. And that they have. They had the power of the presence of Jesus in them. They have compassion in them. They have care for the man in them. They had their eyes open. They knew what was going on. They had the word of God in them. They had the kingdom of God in them. They had something that they can offer to the man. We all have something to offer. We all have something to offer. If you believe in the risen Christ, you have something to offer. You have something in you that you can give someone. You can
can give compassion. You can give love. You can give a little time of your time, of your busy time. You can give attention. You can stand by. You can ask a question. There is something that the reason Christ has changed us and have given us some gifts, something that we can offer to one another. We cannot continue living on as if everything happens inside here. Our witness needs to happen outside of these four doors. When people see our witness, when people see what can we offer, when people see how we treat one another, when people see how we care for one another, when people see if the presence of Christ is in us, then they will believe in Christ. Then they will receive our witness. Then they will see the presence of God, the presence of the risen Christ in us. How else would they see Christ in us if we don't care about anyone? If we do not pay attention? If we don't treat others with dignity and respect and with the compassion that we are to treat one another? Outside and inside. That's what reveals Christ's presence among us. And because these, they believe in the resurrection, they decided to leave their faith. They gave witness to their faith and they offered to them something, something that this man from then on could praise God after receiving the healing. There's something interesting in this story is that nothing is said about the man having faith. And this is a big thing among us because we always look for, for a way to, uh, to explain or to put excuses where nothing happens. If I pray for you and you are not healed, uh, you didn't, did not have enough faith. <laughs> it is your fault. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's who we are. We always blame someone or, or something or something. But listen here. This man had no faith. He was not expecting that. He was just asking for money. And they, they gave him what they had. They said, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, be healed. Stand up. They gave him from their compassion, from their love. They took care of him, and he was here. It was their faith. It was their doing. It was their faith that changed the life of that man. It is our faith, brothers and sisters. It is us that have given the commission, the commandment to change the world. To change the world. And faith is not something that you can muster for yourself. Faith is something to be received. It is a gift from God. Receive it. Receive it. Trust. Trust that faith. Move. Risk yourself. There to help. There to go the, the second mile. There to take risk. Trusting. Trusting that you are sent by God. Don't let anybody stop you. Don't let nothing hold you back. When you want to do something, when you think that you can do something, go ahead, go ahead, trust, believe, and work toward that that you think God can do. We know, I know, we all know that we are in a precarious situation and times in general as churches and also us as United Methodist Church, as Epworth Church. We have so many needs, but especially we need to be more relevant into our community. We need to transform lives. We know, we know that that's a need. We have so many needs. We have so many needs. Do we come out from a place of scarcity? Or do we say, well, I may not have that, but I, I'm going to give what I have. I have trust in God. I have the love of God. I have the compassion. 
I have the skills. I have the gifts. Come out and see what is that God has given us so we can move trusting God. Not on our own volition and strength, but on the power and the faith that we have received from God. The same in your family, in your surroundings, wherever you are, there's something that we can contribute to heal the family, the community, the relationship. There's something in us that God has given to us that when we trust God, we can offer and change somebody else's life and change the world around. Well, they looked at the man, and the man looked at them. Silver of gold I have I known. But they didn't stop with what they didn't have. But they simply, and they didn't move on. Well, I don't have money, so let me continue going into the church. I don't have money. No, no, no. They stopped. They took the time to consider what they did have and what they could offer to this man who he surely was, they saw as his brother, as Jesus had taught him. And they said to him, what I have, I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, stand up and walk. And the man was healed. And the man was healed. We may not have power to literally make the lame walk, but are there are things we can do or say because of our faith in the power of the presence of the risen Christ in our faith community to bring healing to those who are outside the gate. And so this beautiful text and story challenges us to ask, who is laying outside our beautiful gate? What burdens the people around us carry? What healing do they need? Do we see a reason for being mainly to walk by, step over those problems and need on our way in pray and pray? Or do we see our calling as a church to minister outside the gate and so powerfully witness to our faith in word and deed that others might have reason to leap ahead of us into church to praise God and feel they too belong in God's house? Have we considered that maybe it is impossible to truly praise God as a church unless we are accompanied in our worship by the wounded and marginalized in our society today? Peter concludes his message in the first reading for today with a call to repentance. Repent and turn to God so that your sin might be wiped out. Repent and turn to God so that your sin might be wiped out. What did they need it to repent about? About not seeing themselves as the body of Christ. As not seeing them, themselves with something with uh, equipped with God's gift to give away. About not seeing themselves as a transforming, as a transforming messenger of the gospel. Our praise and prayer, brothers and sisters, is not complete if we as a church are not living our faith in the world outside our gate. Our own problems, our own burdens are so many. It is easy to forget those who are God's people and are calling to live beyond our own needs and problems. For that reason, Jesus nourishes us with forgiveness, with faith renewed, with healing, with strength of mission. The risen Christ is truly present today in the proclaiming of his word. Every time we gather in the communion with him and one another, we gather in order to renew our life as a church so that we, like Peter, like John, might bear a powerful witness to his resurrection. Sisters and brothers, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah.
Christ is risen. Hallelujah. Amen. You are invited to come to the altar. If you want to be a powerful messenger of the good news of salvation. If God is calling you and you are afraid and you don't know where to go. If you know that you have something to offer but are not sure what it is that you have to offer. Or if you know what you are to offer for you rather wait for someone to go first. It doesn't matter where you are in this journey. God is calling you today and telling you I have given you power. I have given you gifts. I have given you my presence. I have given you the Holy Spirit so you may go out, so you may Proclaim my word so you may not be afraid to touch someone, so you may not be afraid to invite others, so you may not be afraid to tell to someone, I don't have this to give you, but this I'm going to give you. We all have something to give. you are 
assure them that what they are called to do is not of their own power, but remains is about your power, God. You are the one who gives us the power to do and to be. Yes. Oh Lord, pour down your Holy Spirit. Yes. Pour down, oh God, new strength. Pour down, oh God, new living waters. Pour down, oh God, a new desire to serve you, a new spirit of compassion and love, oh God, that we may come together to serve you, oh God. Whatever it is that they need, we ask that you provide. Whatever it is that is making them hesitant to respond to your call, Cast it away, O oh God. Cast it away. And enable them. Equip them as you have promised to do. That they may move in faith towards you. That they may move in your power. Jesus. Oh God, be with them. That every step they take, that everywhere they move, they move in your will. Oh God, lead them, embrace them, surround them. That every step they do be according to your will. Oh God, heal them inside and out. Provide for them. Wash over them. That they may have the assurance every day, every morning, that as they get out of their beds every morning, they know that they are not walking alone or lonely. That they are walking in the zone of your grace. Yes, Lord. That you are ahead of them. That you are around them, that you are behind them, oh God, that they do not belong to this world, that they belong to you, oh God, that they are your children, oh Lord, and that you have their lives in your hands, oh God. Bless all of us as your church. Continue to lead us, continue to empower us, that we may be that recent community that community that you want us to be. Oh Lord, that we may look at you and only at you and trust you completely. Oh Lord, that when our, when our eyes tend to be distracted, when we tend to trust what other more than you, oh God, that we may be reminded that you are the one who call us. Yes. That we are to serve you and you alone. Yes. And that we are here for you. Oh Lord, that we may see the marks of your wounds but that we may see also the presence and the reality of your resurrection. Bless each one of us today. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Go in peace and serve the Lord. It is his will that every need be supplied. You are our hymn. So we will be in the hands of the ushers at this moment as we begin with our offering. And we have a Zelle also that we can send our offering or tithes to, uh, to this church. Please, you know, give with your heart tells you to Amen. give. And if you cannot give, just say thank you for what you have. In Jesus' name.
offertory prayer in unison. Creator of all, of all we, know, we know and all we don't know, as we bring our gift this day, we ask you to help us to trust you more. Forgive us when we entertain the thought that our future lies in bank balances and the accumulation of stuff. Remind us as Peter reminded the early power that through Jesus we have come to trust in God who raised him from the dead and gave him glory so that your faith and hope are set on God. May our life reflect that trust to others. In the powerful name of Jesus, amen. <laughs> some announcements to make. Yay. Okay. <clears throat> First, we'll start with our April celebrants who are celebrating their birthdays. Woo -woo. Okay. You are the gift to life. Oh, so sweet and special. A very happy birthday to you. This week, we are celebrating with Ellen, Emily Calhoun, Barbara Brannon, Jamu Week, Hope Elizabeth Darris, Love Joy Okang, Ethel Quay, and Renea Edwards. Happy birthday, everyone. Let's sing that song. forgotten to include, everybody's included. All right, let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for Emily, for Barbara, for Yimu, for Hope, for Love Joy, for Ethel, for Rihanna, in their special celebration of one more year in their lives. We thank you, God, for you have created them, for they belong to you. We thank you, God, for all the gifts that they bring to their world and to their families. We thank you, O oh God, for their high moments and for their low moments. We thank you, O oh God, for their caring and for their witness to your love. And we ask, O oh God, that you continue to give them wisdom, that you continue to wash over them, that in whatever stage of their life they are, O oh God, that you embrace them, that you remind them that they are you or that you belong, that they belong to you that you help them grow in knowledge, that you help them grow in strength, in health, 
O God, and that they may be able to accomplish the desire of their hearts. O God, we ask that you be also with their respected families, that they may continue to love one another and to care for one another, that they may flourish in everything they do and give glory to your name. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. <laughs> okay. Next we have a bereavement notice. Oh, oh, sorry. Excuse me. I would like to welcome all of the visitors that we have today. Do we have any visitors here today with us? If you're here, please stand. No? Okay, everybody's family. That's great. Hallelujah. That's great. Okay, great. Um, so with our bereavement notice, it is with sadness and deepest regards that we announce the passing of Miss Sally Mears. Her viewing will be held on April 19th at Epworth United Methodist Church from 10 a.m. to noon. Service will be, service will commence at noon um, and the repast will be immediately after. Um, in regards to the service, Miss Paula is asking for the senior choir to meet after service directly so that they can rehearse for the uh, service. Um, next is that there was a uh, meeting today for the administrative council, but it will be rescheduled uh, to another day. When that day comes, everybody will be let known. And lastly, uh, anybody who, any uh, parent or guardian who has children from the ages of five to 16, I would like to have a meeting with you guys downstairs if that's very possible. Just a quick meeting to discuss some things with you guys. Um, and that is all for the announcements. Oh, and please do not forget your sick and shun in. We have to pray for them. We have to pray for everybody, really. But let's not forget our sick and shut in. Okay. Now we will begin with our congregational song, Let It Breathe On Me, number 503 in our hymnals, which will be led by the pastor. Number 503.
forth in the love of God. We will take this love into unlawfully parts of our lives. Go forth in the grace of Jesus Christ. We will look for him in the faces of every person we meet. Go forth in the peace of the Spirit. We will share this hope with the brokenness all around us. Gracious and loving God, we thank you for every day. We thank you, God, for our sisters and brothers in Christ. And especially for those who came before us. Especially those who witnessed to us about your love, like Mrs. Mary. We ask that you continue to be with all the families that are grieving, especially the family of our sister, oh God. We pray that you comfort them, that you strengthen them, and that we may be able to celebrate her life with joy, with deep joy in our hearts, that she is with you, and that there is eternal life in you. And now as we go of this place, oh God, we ask that you breathe on us, that your peace be with us, that everywhere we go, we may share your presence, that others may see the risen Christ in us. These things we pray in the one who gathers us today, our Father, our Father whom are in heaven. and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Now we will begin with our recessional. Let the church say amen. <laughs> Serve the Lord, remember the shut-ins, and remember the poor. We go in the name of Christ. Amen. 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 Have a nice week, everyone. Stay safe. Stay warm.